Good morning, Connections. It's Tuesday, December 15th, 2020. Welcome. So glad you're here. So glad you have decided to pursue God with everything that you are. And the best place to begin every day is seeking Him in His Word. So I am, <laughs> I am grateful for your company. I uh, am uh, proud of your efforts. So let's get started. So another installment of Hello Friends is hot off the, the presses and going to be available at 10 o'clock today for a premiere. So if you have not gotten a chance to uh, watch any of Denez's uh, devotions, I encourage you to do so. This is number seven in the series and she brings something very unique and uh, uplifting and encouraging and it is worth a watch so today at 10 o'clock next installment uh, make sure you watch it and i know that your outlook on things will improve so uh, be on the lookout all right moving along into our devotion uh we i have to apologize uh there was an assumption made that all of the books that I had ordered, I had ordered 20 of them, had been distributed, and they have not. Uh, I have a copy here in my office that I referenced yesterday, and then I discovered uh, a box of probably eight more books uh, still at the office. So we have plenty of copies. If you did not get your copy yet, uh, please do so reach out to Dave. Dave was not feeling well yesterday, so he was not uh, out and about, but I do know that he plans on being out and about today. If that changes for any reason, we will figure out how to get these books in your hands. But as I mentioned before, you are not behind, uh, and all of these are going out on Facebook and YouTube. Now, there was a major issue with Google yesterday. It uh, uh, inhibited my ability to get the video out on YouTube, corrected that this morning. So yesterday's video is on Facebook currently. And by the time you're seeing this, you can find yesterday and today's uh, on, uh, on YouTube. But I apologize for yesterday. John brought it to my attention very early. And that was due to uh, some, some issues going on with Google. Um, and I believe they've all been been taken care of. So uh, catch up is what I'm trying to say. Uh, go back, uh, watch the introductions and the first chapter. And then, um, as I said, the chapters are small. So you'll be able to, to still get the book in your hands and be right where we are uh, in no time. So I will get those books out if we need more books after that. I will get those out to you as well, but uh, uh, do apologize. My assumption was that uh, we were down to just the last book. So um, stay tuned. Today's devotion uh, is on chapter three, and I am entitling this uh, Longing. And I think it's a beautiful description of, uh, we talked about, uh, a few weeks ago, in Sunday's message about despair, and despair is an opportunity to seek God and restore hope and keep our eyes trained upon Him. Well, uh, another instrument that God uses is longing, and uh, it it comes when perhaps we. The old saying of you don't know how good you have it until you don't have it anymore, or you um, experience that with relationships that um, you undervalue or don't appreciate people until they, they move out of your life. Um, that's longing. And it's a powerful instrument to draw us into a relationship with God and sustain that relationship. Because we, we don't enjoy experiencing the pain of 
of longing, the pain of, of, of absence. So as we walk with much afraid today, I want you to keep that in mind. And I thought it was very uh, a great transition from where we were a few weeks ago in Psalms and David expressing longing and what much afraid is going to experience today in chapter three. So went backwards on our trail a bit as far as uh, our scripture references and went back to Psalm 51. And this is one that we studied a few weeks ago, but I think it's uh, you know very in line with what much afraid is experiencing uh, in chapter three. So Psalm 51, Verse 10, create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. That's a great definition of longing, of, of David's carelessness in his relationship with God. And now he finds this gap has opened up between himself and God. And it hurts. It, uh, it's not how it's supposed to be. There's supposed to be this intimacy, this closeness, this confidence And David notices that it's missing. David notices that, that by his own actions, this gap has opened. And he longs to experience what he had with God. He longs to be restored and longs to, to, to not have that distance any longer. So, Remember that passage as we read just an excerpt from chapter 3. Reminder, I am not going to cover the entire chapter because I want you to discover Much Afraid. I want you to enjoy the journey. But I do want to highlight some of the things out of each chapter so that we have some talking points. Um, Denez would like to, at some point, you know, kind of review the entire book and you know, question and answer, and uh, I think that's a wonderful idea. Uh, many ways that we can use Much Afraid's journey to help us on our own. The thorn in her heart was throbbing and aching in a manner she could scarcely bear. Remember, the seed has been planted of love. Uh, that's one of the first things that Jesus did in chapter 1 to give her the ability to, to, uh, to grow. First, the seed of love had to be planted. And at the time, Jesus explained that to love is to also invite pain, or in this case, what we're calling longing. So the thorn in her heart was throbbing and aching in a manner she could scarcely bear. It was as though the pain was hammering out something which at first she was still too confused to be able to understand. An instrument that God uses. We get our first taste of what it is to be in right relationship with God. We get our first taste of, of the new life, who we were supposed to be all along. And then perhaps we stumble, perhaps we are drawn back into that group of folks that, uh, that God had delivered us from. Prayerfully, you will experience a longing. Prayerfully, you will, uh, you will want to be that person that you got a, a, a peek of, a glimpse of. And that's what Much Afraid is experiencing. She, she knew that she should have been more bold. She knew that she was tasked with responding to the shepherd when he called. And she allowed 
her, her fear to overwhelm her. Opening the door, she went out into the, the darkness. A hundred craven fears lurking in the lonely street could not have deterred her at that moment. For the pain in her heart swallowed up fear and everything else and drove her forth. I love that. So just as we talked about despair, having a purpose and in close relationship with hope, longing motivates us. We heard it in in the words of David, of this longing, I want you back, Lord. I need you. I can't live without you. Much of Fred's case, it is driving her forward. Just a chapter ago, she was ensnared by, by fear. And now she is pushing all of that aside and stepping out in faith to pursue the shepherd. All because of longing. So, much of the themes of this book are how to begin to perceive some of the things that are working in our lives as as God's encouragement forward. When we discovered Much Afraid, she was stagnant. She was kind of, her life was not where it needed to be, but safe enough. It was only the realization that, that fear was going to eventually overtake her, that Craven was going to demand to marry her. that pushed her forward. And now we see that, that this inaction from chapter two has spawned this passionate response of, I don't care what's outside this door, I'm taking this step of faith. If that's where you find yourself today, I encourage you forward. Because God is going to use this instrument of longing time and time again. To keep us close, to remind us not to take him for granted, and to keep up with the pace that he is setting, as the shepherd is doing with Much Afraid. As Much Afraid stumbled towards, toward him, he stepped quickly to her side, and she fell at his feet sobbing. Oh, my Lord, take me with you, as you said. Don't leave me behind. I am here, said Much Afraid, still kneeling at, your, at his feet. And I will go with you anywhere. Then the shepherd took her by the hand, and they started for the mountains. Beautiful interchange. She sets out in the middle of the the night. By the time she has discovered the shepherd, he's right where he, he said he would be. And said, did question why, why she didn't come when called, but also encouraged her that she wasn't too late, that it, it was time to go. And they began their journey together. We spoke on Sunday of God being the the God of, of many, many chances. And that's God's grace. God desires for you to be in relationship with him. And he is very patient. And... He has created all of these instruments to encourage you forward, to take the small steps of faith. And he waits with his arms wide open. 
for you to arrive. Today is the day to begin your journey anew. Whether you've been traveling with Jesus for a very long time or this is your very first day, there is something that God desires to accomplish in you and through you. But it takes courage. Time to move. And I pray that God has has planted the seed of love and you feel a longing today to be closer to him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we long to be more. We long to experience the fullness. We've, perhaps we've gotten a glimpse. Perhaps we've experienced the mountaintops. We've, we've witnessed miracles. Forgive us, Lord, for our short memories. Forgive us, Lord, that time seems to to dull our ability to recall your greatness. You woke us today, Lord, and upon our hearts you've placed a longing, a desire to be as close, if not closer, than we've ever been to you before. Thank you, Lord, for, for encouraging us forward. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, your mercy, and your grace, that we find you exactly where you said you would be. We pray that not only for our own lives, Lord, we pray that for everyone that we come in contact with today. Stir in them a longing, Lord. Help them recognize the emptiness in their life is the space that you are meant to fill. We long for you, Lord. And we long to see kingdom and we long to see our neighbors eyes open and accepting the gift of salvation Lord continue to pour out your blessings we ask Lord that you would bring revival on the the ends of, of this pandemic that you would bring comfort and healing to all those that are being affected this by this on a daily basis. For your glory and honor, in Jesus' name, amen. All right. Join our journey tomorrow, chapter 4, and we will finish out the week in chapter 5. Chapter 4 has got a lot of great stuff in it. And I hope to be able to do it justice. But read ahead today into chapter 4. And I know that uh, the special nature of this story will start to, to become evident. Till then, know that I love you and that I miss you. And please, be good. <laughs>